a youth hockey coach steps from his St. Paul home has been linked to a viral high school armed robbery video. This is video from April of 2022 of the 17 year old using a gun of some type to rob a student inside Harding High School. He Yo. pleaded guilty to aggravated robbery in that case and was discharged from probation and supervision just four months ago. This recent arrest comes as leaders across the Twin Cities warn of an alarming trend of crimes involving teens. Time and time again, young people continue to reoffend. They're getting caught with a gun in the commission of a crime, stolen guns, young people who shouldn't have their hands on guns. Again, using these guns to solve their disputes and commit crimes in our city. That shouldn't have to happen more than once or twice before the criminal justice system says enough is enough. So the question becomes, can anything be done to stop this trend? Leaders tell Fox 9 there just aren't enough resources right now to help some teens. Fuck your resources and fuck helping them, man. This is, it's like they, they never going to stop with the fucking help the fucking criminal bullshit. Salute right. to Charles no. S, man. Salute to Deluxe 247, a.k.a. Cal Ripken, a.k.a. the real MVP coming through once again. Go ahead. Yo, I need I need them to elaborate on this whole young people spiel. Yeah, okay. this is what they mean. What do they mean, young people? They mean uh, they they mean they mean it, it's ninety five percent son, young sons, including Somalians and shit like that. But young people of fucking son descent, and like five percent others, and if it was any other thing, if it was fucking, if this was grades of if if ninety five percent of the people fucking getting into college and making A's and B's in the school system were black, they would be talking about it. Oh my God, we have Minneapolis. Black kids are doing so well in Minneapolis. But when it comes to shootings and crime, they lump everybody in together and make it seem like it's all the fucking kids. No, it's just black kids. So low level offenders are sent home time and time again, but too often. We are seeing those cases where early intervention could have saved lives. Courtney Godfrey joins us now. And Courtney, what's missing in this scenario? Well, Randy, if you ask Hennepin County Attorney Mary Moriarty, there's a huge gap in services that there's not enough intervention programs, especially for these low intervention. Reese, what, what, what did I know they had intervention programs when you was young? Yeah, some type of camp or something you go to, Job Corps, or, you know, judges were even sending people to the Army. They sent me to the Army. Yeah, there's no there's no solutions. Well, that, that oh, wow. might that might help out if they started doing that again. Like, because you, you're, you're going, some soldiers are going to take gang. you away. I heard the Army is full of gangs and shit now. It is. Man. It's fucked up. Yeah. Is that there's not enough intervention programs, especially for these low level offenders and even for those high level offenders in the time before they go in front of a judge. Tucked away in a small office in the Minneapolis Public Service Center is often the last stop a teen offender will make before police release them from custody. But we absolutely don't just release or discharge people. This bitch. Um, that's not even language that we can use because we are a voluntary program. As Beth Holger explains, the Youth Connection Center is staffed 24-7 to take in any kid between the ages of 10 and 17 who's picked up by police on a low-level offense. Here, they're offered a variety of services and connected with a case manager. It's where the teens picked up in Dinkytown last weekend on disorderly conduct and curfew violations were brought after being cited. We know at the link the real reason why a lot of these youth are engaging is because they're struggling with much deeper underlying issues. And so we want to help get to those and help support them so that they can do the positive things they want to do with their life and that our whole community can be safe. I, I hate this fact that the, the, kid, the good kids who live in Blackistan, the kids are fucking doing their homework and that fucking practice and shit or fucking violin practice or fucking basketball. Those kids got issues too, man. Thanks. What the fuck is they they, they act like the every like 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 they don't the these fucking bastards that are shooting people the only ones with problems, man. Right. They're That's living in fear, shit. dog. When you see them on a the train in the bus, they're huddled in corners together away from all the ratchet shit that goes on. They're sitting in the front with the old people. You know who those kids are when you see them. Yeah, I those kids are problems most too. Of them. Yeah, they do. Most of the kids fall in that category, I think. Exactly. Exactly. Most of the kids are, are decent kids, man. 
and and when I say most, I'm talking about like you know maybe sixty percent, but it's still more than more than half, more yeah. than half. For at the same time, County Attorney Mary Moriarty is pushing for more of these early interventions. The preventions that we're talking about are very effective. We're just not doing them. We're not collaborating. But we Look are. At everybody's a fucking woman. It's like all women. But she wants to see more out of home placements in group homes and treatment centers, saying there just aren't enough of those right now. My fear is that we've got kids who are doing the disorderly conduct, the fighting, the being in stolen cars. If we don't intervene early with them. Being in stolen because you mean stealing cars. See how they the way they these fucking it's all feminine energy. Yeah. The whole thing. Being in <laughs> stolen car. No, they stole the car, motherfucker. Yeah, they're making it seem like they just appeared in the car and shit. <laughs> right, like, I mean, this like, is this is how women solve problems, though. And this exactly. is why they never build anything. Exactly. Um, they will end up escalating their behavior into these more serious offenses. And we don't have those resources in the community to really intervene with those youth. And with Youth Connection Center on pace to serve around 500 juveniles this year, they say the need is critical. We're really lacking safe places for these youth to go. Of those who continued with Youth Connection Center, 86% did not reoffend for six months after their initial <laughs> site. 86 didn't reoffend for six months. What the fuck did she just say? 86% didn't reoffend for six months. That's like calling yourself a cancer survivor because you survived another seven years, but you die on year eight. And also, it's so hard to get co get convicted because they're not talking about charges. They're talking about convictions. <laughs> it's so hard for a teen, son teen, to get convicted of something in one of these cities. Let's see these fucking pieces. This New York, this fucking Jalen 